Welcome back, Charlie Stevenson from Alien Whip here. And today we're going to look at attaching a Bayang uh, toy protocol receiver um, harvested from an old toy remote control to an Alien Whip Zero. So um, if you take one of the controllers apart that come with a lot of the Eosheen and, and similar toys, there's usually a little receiver, or they're using it in this case as a transmitter, attached. And you can see it right here on this one. Um, this one is the BWOOP uh, 03. So what we're gonna do uh, is take this off by applying some extra solder and flux on this side and just uh, popping it out. So what I like to do is use this MG Chemicals flux that I'm always raving about and just squeeze out a good amount. Comes out pretty fast. And yeah, maybe add some extra solder. So we get your favorite solder over here, whatever you like. And tin up your tip. For something like this, you may want to increase the temperature a little bit because um, all of this copper here can just wick away the heat. But I'm just going to add a ton, as you can see, a ton of solder. Um, I don't plan on using this toy controller again, and I'd really like for this just to fall out without any effort. Just going to go back and forth like that. See it's starting to like drop down a little bit, and that's it. Should be. Let's check it out. Yep, just fell right out. So that's where it used to be, maybe some hot glue on it. And each of the you know boards looks different. This was a slightly different board, but um, underneath they still look the same. There you go. There it is. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of wire, and we're going to attach it um, to all the appropriate pads on here. And we may need more colors. Yesterday, when I did the Alien Whoop 2.1 build video, we used just three colors for SPI. You have several more pins that you need to hook up, so let's go over those. Let me clean off this board here. Just hit it with some alcohol, get that cleaned off. All that, all that flux and hot glue, just taking it off. So let's see what we have to connect here. It's actually labeled pretty well. Um, this board had a bunch of hot glue on it. You'd want to, you know, hit that with some hot air or somehow or other get all that hot glue off of there or let it soak in rubbing alcohol. Um, this one over here is already cleaned up. So we've got voltage, ground, NC means not connected, so there's two you can skip. What do we have on this side? Data, clock. The other one's a little bit indiscernible. I'm going to clip on one of these little lenses and we'll take a closer look. So now we can see a lot more clearly NC, NC, ground, VDD. That's our, going to be our positive. There's the crystal, that giant can looking thing. Chip select, clock, data, power, and ground. That's five wires compared with three for an S-Bus receiver. So before I go and look for the other colors of wire that I want to use, I can start by doing power and ground. So again, you're going to want to add some flux. And maybe tin up these pads a little bit. These pads are already tinned up, but they may have had like a lead free solder. So I'm just getting all that crud off of there. And putting some of this nice silver based solder on there. Okay, so now that we've 
removed any of the hot glue and excess solder that was there before and put some clean solder on there, we can go ahead and add wires. So with some receivers you get, or you know maybe VTX, you get a little bundle of wire like this. Maybe you're not using it. And using different colors will allow us to more easily uh, do this right. So let's do red and black for power and ground. If you have a bunch of crud on there, you may just want to clean clean it off before you start. Okay, I've cleaned all the gunk off of the pads. So See if I can get this in the light a little bit better. So I'm just going to add some flux. And we'll do positive and the negative power pads. So I'm going to use red and black. Probably no big, no big shock there. I've used a lot of that flux that I'm a big fan of and the silver base solder, silver bearing solder, 2% silver. So that's one side. Go ahead and clean it up. So there's one side ready to go, power and ground. Now we have three more wires to go, clock, okay, uh, chip select, and data. These ones, I guess, can be arbitrary. You know, perhaps in the past we would have used on an S-Bus receiver yellow for data for signal. So let's just keep that one going. Let's add some more flux. Yellow for data. Maybe, I don't know, green for clock. Clean the tip, add a little more solder, and we'll do chip select. I keep wanting to say cable select, I don't know why. Add some flux and see I have a good amount of flux there. Hopefully the solder will just flow right on. If you really want to obsess a little you can take any solder off of the NC pad. the weight to a minimum and clean it up. I use this isopropyl alcohol on an old toothbrush and just scrub it until all the extra flux is gone and you should have nice clean shiny joints and there we go. 
Okay, welcome back. I've got my Alien Wolf Zero here. And I've got this little transceiver um, that talks the Beiyang protocol that I've harvested from one of the old toy remotes. And we soldered all the wires onto it, ground and power. And on this side, we've got chip select, clock, and data. And now what we have to do is connect those. So, um, AlienWhip Zero is open source hardware, so we can just go in here and take a look. Um, you can see in my handwriting, if you can read it, that on pin A3, GPIO A3, we're going to do um, the data. On pin A2, GPIO A2, we're going to do the clock. And on A1, we're going to do chip select. And those correspond to um, the RX, TX, and CS pads that are labeled on the silk screen there. So yeah, let's do it. First of all, we need to figure out where we want to place our receiver. And to have a really lightweight whoop, we probably want to cut the wires as short as we can. So maybe I'll leave a little bit of extra. Um, and then we can cut them down from there. So maybe we'll put it right dead center. So let's just cut all of our wires. Okay, so let's clamp this in here and we can tin up these wires. Let's see if we can bring it into focus again. Here we go. Uh, so you want to wet the tip. Oh, <clears throat> helps if your soldering iron's turned on. We'll let the iron heat up here. So again, we did white for chip select, so that's going to go to CS, this SPI pad right here. Green, we did clock, and that's going to go, clock is going to go to TX, right there. I um, suppose that means data is going to go to regular RX. And power, we're not going to run it off a of 5 volt SPI, we're going to run it off a of 3.3 and ground. So those five pads right there in that little cluster we're going to use. Let's go ahead and wet the tip. And turn up these wires a little bit. And we can tin the pads on the on the Alien Whoop Zero flight controller that we're going to be using. I've put flux all over it just to make the soldering nice. We want the solder to wick into those through holes, those little vias they call them, and that will keep hopefully the pad from pulling away if uh, for some reason we put a lot of strain on the receiver wire. We don't want the pad to lift off and tear the traces out. So make sure you get some solder down into those uh, by using flux. So if you're curious, um, we looks like we left about a little bit over a centimeter of wire, maybe 12 millimeters of wire, something like that. So tin up the tip, and let's just start at the top. Let's do RX. Hopefully the solder will form a little bit of a ball. 3.3 uh, volts. I might be making this look easier than it is in reality, but um, okay. Now, I don't remember SPI. Pad that's chip select. Chip select, we did, looking at the other side here, white. SPI is going to be this little white wire. And it's pretty tight quarters in here, so just take your time. And 
let's see, TX1, that's clock. So this green wire is clock, so we're looks like we're doing good so far. Um, helping hands just fell apart on me. But. So this green wire is clock, so we'll connect that to TX1. And all this will be in the pilot's guide. And finally, black is the ground. Again, you can use small tweezers. Place the wire. Wet the tip of your iron. And put it in place. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is what it should look like. Let's clean it up a bit. So I use this little salsa dish full of rubbing alcohol and an old toothbrush. And I just wet it and scrub it and wet it and scrub it. Get all the old flux away. Because any of that flux will pick up debris. Um, and there we have it. Maybe I'll do a little segment on adding motor plugs. Our manufacturer part number is 53047-0210. And these are two pin headers, um, JST 1.25 I think they're called sometimes. And this is what has become kind of the de facto industry standard for motor plugs for these little brushed quads. So you can see sometimes a silk screen, like we put a little bit of a diagram, hopefully indicates the polarity in a way that's clear. And in order to make the factory uh, assembly a little easier, there's more space than usually would be there for the pins. So just spread the pins a little bit and kind of guide it in with your thumb. Um, this can cause these two pins to kind of lean in towards each other. So you may want to straighten those out. And you'll see that the side with the hole in it, there's a little bit of a thicker um, silk screen there. It should kind of supposed to represent uh, the motor plug as if you were looking at it from the top down. And on the other side they go the other direction so just be mindful of that. Um, the plus side is on the right side if you're facing it with this exposed portion the right side is plus so and there's a plus sign on the board and a minus sign. So put the pins in, just kind of gently wiggle it into place. I've done a lot of these, so this I may be making it look easier than it really is. But and rotate the flight controller. Do it again. Kind of gently rock it into place. And one more. Okay. So, flip it over and we'll add some of that flux. And doesn't hurt to be generous with the flux. This is just going to help you. These square pads are for folks who wanted to direct solder their motors to either save weight or maybe try to squeeze out a little bit more power. And, you know, get a good amount of solder on the tip and just kind of hold your iron in between the pins a little bit. 
and you can see that it just sort of wicked into place. Add some more solder. Allow it to just sort of wet and fill into place. Without flux, it just becomes brittle and chunky and bridges between the two and you'll have a nightmare. So spend 10 bucks, get some of this flux, all of your drone builds will look incredible. People will be in awe. I think you have crazy soldering skills, but it's really just the flux. So there we go. If you want to be a Weight Watcher, you can take your snips after you've cleaned the flux off and snip those down. Maybe I'll do that. Again, a little rubbing alcohol. Clean it up. You can dry it off with hot air or paper towel or something. I usually just squeeze the flight controller between my t-shirt because I wear cotton t-shirts a lot. And that will get rid of any liquid. And there we go. Look at that. It's pretty nice. <clears throat> and these tips are, these exposed portions are kind of pointy. Maybe they add a little bit of weight, so I usually cut them off. Cut them off. And, you know, just so you're not piercing any wires, you know, maybe for your camera or your VTX, just snip those off and good to go. So the last thing we need to add is a pigtail, uh, power cord, battery cord, whatever you want to call it, battery cable. Uh, micro motor warehouse, a lot of sites sell these. Um, JST 2.0 um, pH battery cables, you know, with the nice 24 gauge silicon wire. Um, nice and flexible, you know, great, great conductance. Heat shrink already on there. So from the factory, a lot of your boards are going to come with a pretty long pigtail. Um, you know, and you can see that these pigtails are really, really long. So just think about in your whoop, how much space do you really need, you know, to go to the battery? Um, and you can see it's not a lot. So you can eyeball it, you can measure it. Um, this is going to be the front of the whoop. This is going to be the back. And we're going to run this out the bottom. And, you know, you want enough so that it can bend and make the connection. So it will cut it right there. See how that looks. Look at all that weight. You won't have to add. Sometimes after you know a month or two of wear and tear, <clears throat> heavy wear and tear, or you know, if you got a little excited removing your battery, um, you could damage your pigtail. So this is a good skill to have. All right, got that on there. I'm gonna clean this up. Some rubbing alcohol, scrub it off. All right, so you're gonna wanna take your snips and cut these shorter, just so you don't have those uh, exposed wires sticking up or any of that extra weight, and you're good to go.
Okay, so I've added some heat shrink to the uh, Bayang protocol receiver that we harvested from the toy transmitter. Um, and just somehow or other you want to protect it from shorting out on all these other components that are underneath there. So if you want to run it on the top of the board or the bottom of the board, you know, maybe just a piece of electrical tape there would suffice, but I went ahead and wrapped the whole thing in heat shrink all the way around. Adds a little bit of extra weight, but I think it's worth it. And so now what we want to do is install this into a frame. So I'm just using the same frame that I used for the Alien Whoop version 2.1 build video. If you want to know the modifications I've made, check out this link in the top right corner. Insert the flight controller into the frame. And plug in your motor wires. And again, just like with the Alien Whoop version 2 and version 2.1 and pretty much every other flight controller on the market, the wire or the plug that's closest to the motor is the one that you're going to want to use. Um, and you can, as I said in the, in the Alien Whoop version 2.1 build video, you can wrap these around. Uh, these awesome sauce motors have rather long wires. You can wrap them around and put a rubber band or a piece of heat shrink or some tape to keep them from popping up in hard acro flight. But there you go, that's what it's gonna look like. Alien Whoop Zero in a cockroach frame with awesome sauce motors and Eosheen quad blade props. Um, I was not planning on FPVing uh, this board. I'm not going to put a camera and VTX on this board for this demonstration, but if you were to, you would solder it um, either to the pigtail itself or to positive and negative. These two pads are designed for the camera. For some cameras, if they don't have good filtering built in, um, you might want to solder to on the bottom of the board. Um, there's a 5 volt regulated pad right there and a ground and so these are, are a little bit cleaner than what you might get um, straight off of the lipo and so you may want to put your camera and VTX on there just to have cleaner signal. This board is a prototype so the LED is going to be red but on the production boards uh, they're blue just uh, for your information. So in order to bind a Bayang receiver, you know, if you want to use an FR Sky or DSMX, we're working on the code for DSMX. For FR Sky, the procedure is going to be slightly different. Um, you're going to have a little button on the bottom, just like you would on the version 2.1. Uh, here's an XM, and you would just hold in the button on the XM and plug in a battery and go through the bind procedure for your radio. For this, I'm using an external protocol module. That's going to click into the module bay of your FR Sky. JR bay, I guess they call it. And kind of outside the scope of this video, but you're just going to power up your transmitter. Maybe. Welcome to OpenTX. And I've already <clears throat> configured this, but what you would do is go into the menu and go into the model that you've created. Let me adjust this. So hit page or hit the menu key, hit page to go to the first page. And I usually go the opposite direction. I think it's the maybe the up arrow on the X9D. And you're going to see that my internal radio module is turned off. And I've got an external module uh, using multi-protocol when the Bayang subtype channels 1 to 16 and auto bind when you plug in. Um, the zero is going to calibrate the gyro. Again, uh, this will be blue on your factory board. And then it's going to go into bind mode when you have a Bayang receiver installed. And if your protocol module or your remote control supports auto bind, then it's just going to connect right away. Otherwise, you need to hit bind. And then 
exit and you're good to go. So now uh, the way I have mine configured, let's just put it right here for now. Um, let me show you. If you go all the way to your inputs tab, I have mine set up in AETR. You need to set up your switches accordingly. This will all be documented in the build manual, but I'm using um, the switch underneath here for ARM. These are some of the mode switches. Um, and you can test all those out, but let's just see if you hit arm. Yeah, it's ripping. Ready to rock and roll.